The mutant known as Magneto is easily one of the coolest and most powerful X-Men. He can levitate, he can attract and reshape metals, he can even pull the iron right out of your blood. But to do that, he'd have to produce some of the most powerful magnetic fields in the universe. Oh, I like that for a pun. Oh. The most cited case of Magneto's iron ripping powers is in X2, X-Men United, where Magneto senses that the abusive guard is carrying too much iron in his blood. Magneto applies his mutant powers, the guard is levitated, and then what looks like his blood iron exits his pores to be accumulated into three metal spheres. We all know that iron is magnetic, but this mutant feat would require way more power than you might think. First, how much iron is in your body right now? Of the total amount of iron in your body, most of it is held up in your blood, and the rest is held in proteins in the bone marrow and liver and spleen. An average well-nourished person has, on average, three to five grams of iron in their body. And if Magneto was to suck all of that out using magnetic fields and form a sphere out of it, that sphere would be exactly this big, about the size of an M&M. There is not enough iron in the average sized person to make three decently sized metal spheres like Magneto gets from the guard, so it makes sense that in X2, Mystique has to inject the guard's butt with additional iron. And looking at the scene a bit more closely, it looks like the volume of iron in the syringe is around 25 milliliters. Mystique powers activate. Still me. Add that volume of butt iron to the volume that's naturally in the body and divide by three to get three spheres as seen in the scene and you get nine milliliters of iron available per sphere, which is actually perfect. With nine milliliters of iron available for each sphere, that would make them about the same size as the Newton's Cradle desk toys that we see Magneto using in the first X-Men film. Go! Go, my envoys of butt iron and destroy Charles! So with a little estimation, it looks like the amount of iron Magneto is pulling out of blood in that scene makes sense, but the way he's pulling it out doesn't. When the guard walks into that cell, Magneto says, too much iron in your blood, not too much iron in your butt, because the body doesn't just let iron atoms hang around freely. And that's because iron is very good at donating and receiving electrons, meaning that it is very good at making chemistry happen. So to make sure that no bad chemistry happens in your body, your body combines iron with something else, like the molecule heme, which makes your blood red. We are all familiar with how magnetic pure iron is. It's the ferro in ferromagnetic after all, but after iron is atomically bound to some other molecule or protein, the electrons that help it be so magnetic are too busy to make it very magnetic at all. Here is a powers of 10 scale of how susceptible materials are to magnetic fields, from repelled by to attracted to. Now, from negative one to zero, you have everything that is considered diamagnetic or repelled by magnetic fields. At the very end of the scale at negative one is where superconductors lie, like those in MRIs, and those things can levitate stuff. From zero to about 0 0.01, you have everything that is considered paramagnetic or weakly attracted to magnetic fields. This is where all the stuff that we consider non-magnetic, like aluminum, to be. Now, everything past that point, there is no end point. And right around here at a relative value of 10,000 lies pure iron. Now, where on this scale do you think blood actually lies? Magneto certainly makes it seem like the iron in the guard's blood is just as magnetic as iron on its own. But though human blood does have different magnetic properties depending on whether or not it is attached to oxygen, human blood and all human tissue is in this range, weakly diamagnetic to weakly paramagnetic. This is billions of times less magnetic than free iron. If human blood really did have the magnetic susceptibility that X-Men seems to suggest, this experiment with a powerful one Tesla magnet and real human blood would look a bit different, wouldn't it? 
This doesn't mean that Magneto couldn't rip the iron out of someone's blood, but to do so, he would have to produce some of the strongest magnetic fields in the known universe. And that would turn his targets to mush. But he's just gotta have that butt iron. Human flesh and blood react about the same to magnetic fields, so you can't just apply a large magnetic field to a person and have just their blood and their iron come out. You have to separate the blood from the body, and that would take a lot of power. So here's our generic security guard dude, security guardman, and I'm Magneto. I extend my hand, here's what happens next. At one Tesla of magnetic field strength, Nothing happens. I have the same magnetic field as a giant rare earth magnet, but all of the security guards' credit cards are wiped. Ha <laughs> ha, try to buy beer with that security guardman. At eight Tesla of field strength, I'm putting out about the same size magnetic field as some of our biggest and most powerful MRIs. The magnetic field is now so strong that if security guardman moves around in it, just walks through it, it's gonna induce an electric charge in his body and he is going to taste metal and his muscles are gonna feel weird and he might see flashes of light induced in his eyeballs called magnetophosphines. You hear that, Charles? It's named after me, Magnet. At 16 Tesla of magnetic field strength, everything is more or less the same, except a frog that was nearby is now levitating. At 50 Tesla of magnetic field strength, the guard's levitating. At 100 Tesla of magnetic field strength, the guard's DNA may start having mutations occur inside of it as the magnetic field interacts with it on a molecular level. Oh, and he might have a heart attack. At 10,000 Tesla, his DNA unwinds. At 100,000 Tesla of magnetic field strength, I still have not separated the iron from the guard's blood. I have, however, started to change the shape of his atoms from something like this to something that looks more like a needle structure. And now all the chemistry that happens in his body stops working the same way. And if he's not dead already, he's dead now. Oh, and he's mush now. I still need that sweet butt iron, so I apply one million Tesla to the guard, who is now a blob of organic mush. But that blob separates due to the body's tissue's small differences in magnetic susceptibility. Gross. Gross, Charles! Okay, so I apply over 10 million Tesla to these organic mush blobs, and the magnetic field strength starts to overcome atomic bonds, and I finally extract my pure iron from the guard's blood, or what was left of it. But I'm now putting out a magnetic field on the order of a neutron star, so everyone within a few hundred kilometers is dead. And all their hard drives and credit cards don't work anymore. But I got my butt iron. I got it. So how powerful does Magneto really need to be in order to rip iron right out of your blood? Well, because iron in blood is no longer magnetic like we usually consider iron to be, Magneto would have to separate you atomically to get the metal he needed. And that would require some of the strongest magnetic fields in the known universe. But if Magneto was that strong, he wouldn't need the iron in the first place. He'd be able to levitate himself and manipulate glass and plastic just like he could metal. You hear that, Charles? because science. So I kind of glossed over this point, but it bears repeating. We have MRIs right now that are so strong, if you move towards them too quickly, you will get shocked and you might faint a little bit. And that's because there's a principle in physics uh, where if you move a conductor inside of a magnetic field, it will induce an electric charge inside of the conductor. We are conductors. We are, we are water and salt and other mush. So there have been cases where in experimental MRIs, if the doctor walks the patient in towards the MRI too quickly, the patient has trouble standing because they're having induced shocks from this giant magnetic field just pulsing through their bodies and they might see stuff in their eyes just from the magnetism. How cool is that? We become Magneto. Isn't that Magneto? 
Thank you so much for watching, Eric. If you want more science stuff, check out The Squatch or the space program on Project Alpha where you can sign up for premium Nerdist experiences like getting this show two days earlier than all the other normies. And check me out here on these. Thank you.